Okay, so I thought I would do a short tutorial on making a trellis style three stone wing. So are you all ready? So if you've got the Grasshopper Gold tools installed, let's go to the gem tool. Let's pick a round stone, 7.5 mils. Let's uh, create it. And while we're here, we might as well do the side stones which will be five moles. And let's create that as well. Okay, so two gems on top of each other. I'm just gonna split them slightly apart. And now while I'm here, let's make the seats that uh, go around the stones. So let's make them 1.5. I pick a circle tool, let's make it 1.5. I'm just going to move it into place. And now this seat needs to be inside the girdles of the stones because we don't want to see it when we're looking down. So I just draw a rough guide. I use the gumball handle of the circle and I squash it in a bit. Put in position. Then I rotate it slightly using the gumball again so that I get the angle of my seat. All right. Let's do them both. So let's take this one, edit, copy, edit, paste. Let's move it down to the bottom stone. Make sure it's also inside the girdle of the stone. Okay, you can leave it round if you want to. You don't have to make them oval your seats. Um, it's your ring. You make it your way. So. Once the seat is positioned, let's take it now and let's revolve them around the center world axis. So I type in revolve around zero. So I type in zero, enter. And then I just hold my, my shift key straight down and I right click and right click and the seats are made. The curves we don't need. So I'm going to grab them and delete them. And now I'm ready to get the ring rail. So let's go to the ring icon on the Grasshopper Gold Tools. Let's pick USA and whatever size you want to make your ring. Okay. I want the killer to the main stone to sit roughly. Make sure your snapping is on here because your snapping is off. You need to grab that line. Let's say uh, a two moles above the line, and I go out to my right, so I know exactly where it is. Now I can grab my center stone, and I can put the point right at that point. So just move the green arrow up, so the point lines up with that line. All right, grab my side stone and roughly put it in its spot. I will adjust it afterwards. So if you turn the snapping off, it'll also help you here. So I'm going to rotate from the girdle of the stone just to get my angle. And then I can, once again, make sure your snapping is off. I can grab that little waffle and I can get it exactly where I want it to go. All right. I need a small gap. Make sure the stones don't touch. Otherwise, when they set, they are going to chip. All right, so I go to transform mirror around the y-axis. That's around the green line. And we are ready to start to put our prongs. All right, so the wires are easy to do. Um, I'm just going to draw a straight line. It doesn't matter where. So a two moles, hold shift to make sure it's straight. And then I'm going to move it So I go to the move tool. I grab the bottom node of the line. So move the bottom node of this line, make sure your snapping is turned on. I grab that and I snap it onto the facet where the prong will actually be. Can you see that it snapped right onto the corner? That's where the prong will sit. So I copied that line, paste that line, 
just move it out the way and I'm going to snap this to where the point where that is going to snap onto that stone. Okay, now I just need to rotate this line. So I'm going to rotate, type in the word rotate. I want to pick the bottom of the line where I snapped it to and rotate the top at an angle that the prong would be at. All right, so there are the my guidelines. I'm going to take all of this. I'm going to hide it, hit in the hide command. And now I'm going to curve, and I'm going to use adjustable blend curve. I'm picking that bottom of that line and the bottom of that line. And you can play around with the tangency or the, the curvature. It's up to you. Whether you want it flattened, whether you want it more rounded. I prefer it more rounded. So I think I might change back to tendency. I think that is better. I'm just going to use these handles just to basically give myself a position. All right. Once I like that, I can bring everything back by right-clicking show all. And now I can pipe this line or this rail. So I type in pipe make sure that when the pipe comes up it's set to diameter and not radius and i want it to be 1.3 and then 1.15 type in 1.15 and there is my first prong so th these prongs are basically straight up and down i like them to sit at a slight angle so i'm going to rotate again i want the top of the prong to stay where it is and just the bottom to move in a little bit so i'm clicking and i'm just going to move it in at a slight angle and then i'm going to move it just back very very small amount to put it back to where it should be again all right make sure they're both where they are meant to be and now let's take this mirror transform mirror this is the y-axis okay all right now we can put in our small prong So this also just needs to be a small line going down and clicking just underneath the bezel. Okay, I'm going to pipe this as well. Once again, make sure it's diameter and 1.1. 1 .1. And now... Let's go to the top view and let's just move it onto the corner where it meets the stone. And I also want it to be at a very slight angle to match the other prong. So I'm going to rotate that. So I'm typing rotate again. I want the top still. So I click the top and then I go down and I just rotate it at a very slight angle as well. It just move it back very slightly because we've rotated it and that's now in place so let's go to transform mirror that's also the y-axis all right so that's basically the prong work done let's hide the gems let's grab all those prongs let's go to the mirror tool click in the bar and that's the X. All right, now we're ready to do the shank. So, bring back our gems. Start with a line. Let's click at the bottom, make sure our snapping is turned on again. Let's click the six o'clock node and we're gonna type down 1.7. Hold shift, make sure it's Repeat the command again. Your polyline, you can right click with your mouse, will repeat it. Hit spacebar, will also repeat it. This measurement is two mils. Holding shift. 
and now let's go to the arc tools and i'm clicking the bottom node the side node holding shift pulling that all the way out and i get a nice arc so let's go to the interpolate make sure i'm starting tangent i click the line go up and then I snap just to where I want the shank to actually stop. <coughs> All right. Just hide that prong away. And this one. And let's put where I want the shank to actually. Mm, I might need the prongs. So let's turn them back on again. So. Let's make sure that the snapping is turned off again because I don't want it to snap to the prongs. And I'm just going to draw where the shank itself will sit inside the actual prong. So let's go to wireframe. And now I just want to pick, you know, you need to make sure that the, the nodes are past each other. There mustn't be an open gap. So I'm picking that line, the curve I just made, the line that will chop the shank, the ring finger, the side, and the, and now I can use curve boolean. So I type in curve boolean. There it is there. And now I pick the inside. Of all those lines and now I am ready to extrude the curve we've just made so you pick the width let's make it 1.5 oops I forgot to pick uh, the solid option let's repeat that command Make sure solid equals yes, both sides yes, and 1.5. Now, if you want to scale a little bit larger, you can use the gumball handle, and you can just scale it a little bit wider if you want to. Okay, let's fillet these edges. So solid, fillet edge, it's always set to 1. I'm going to leave it at one, click that edge, the other edge, enter, enter. All right, last thing to do is to mirror. So transform, mirror, and this is the Y axis again. And there we go. All right, and that's the ring made. So let's see what it'll look like if we run it through a key shot. 